Hi everyone, and welcome back to our latest episode of CNC machining materials with 3D Hubs. Today I'd like to be presenting two materials that we haven't spoken about yet on the series uh, in this vlog, and these materials are copper and brass. Uh, and um, just before we run you through these materials, as usual, I'd like to show you maybe a little bit of a new set that we put here uh, in our maker space, and that is our sample part space. Um, actually, um, just because we've already had a couple of videos about different materials, I thought uh, we would lay them out uh, with our team on a table for you to see. And uh, maybe here you can see uh, the stainless steel parts that we've already shown to you um, in the previous episodes, as well, of course, as some plastic and aluminum parts. And uh, basically, these are all the parts that we're going to go through one by one. And finally, for today's episode, as mentioned, we will be speaking about copper and brass materials. Um, so here are the two sample parts that we have here and um, I'm just going to grab them and we're going to go back on the table and uh, we'll present them. Um, copper and brass have been used way before aluminum was ever used. Um, the reason being it is uh, brass and copper are materials that are more easy to manufacture uh, compared to let's say aluminum which was only um, manufactured at a much later date in the history of, uh, of material science. Uh, the only reason, let's say, if you look at why aluminum, for instance, or steels became, um, uh, let's say, more common in the manufacturing industry or for uh, uh, everyday uh, mechanical objects is probably because for the usage that you wanted to use them for, um, they had maybe a better property that was better suited for the usage. But as it turns out, as old as copper and brass are, they are still used today for a very wide variety of applications, not only in everyday uh, usage, but also in, in, uh, very, uh, uh, in very specific applications of, the, uh, of certain industries. Um, let's say I mentioned everyday, everyday objects. Here we made, um, we made parts that don't really have, um, that don't per se have anything to do with the end usage that these materials would be used for. This is for the sake of uh, showing their machinability. If I were to tell you brass, name one object of brass, you would probably something named that is either a valve or a garden hose. And that would actually be um, right because um, for instance, valves are something that is uh, very often machined out of brass or injected and then machined out of brass. Whether you're talking about the garden hose or let's say um, a valve in the manufacturing industry or let's say you have, an, uh, uh, you have a chemical application that uh, uh, may need a valve with low friction. That is one of the most common things that uh, let's say brass will be used for, uh, meaning an application where re you require low friction and uh, where you have a decent corrosion resistance. Uh, a lot of people think, oh, brass is a very expensive material. And as I said, a lot of people will think it's only for daily usages or maybe uh, some cosmetic usages, but not at all, actually. Uh, a lot of sectors in the manufacturing industry use it. One of the main reasons being, as we mentioned, it's very good mechanical properties as well as uh, its low friction point. But there is an also very interesting point, and it is the machinability of this material. And now, some of you may ask, okay, what, what is machinability exactly? And the machinability is explained simply the uh, propension of a material to be machined easily with, with low power. Uh, but let's say if you were to do this electronic case in 200,000 uh, units or even something as low as 500 or 1,000 units, the fact of being able to cut this material at a slightly lower power, meaning being able to machine it slightly more, um, slightly more fast, might very well be an advantage that you want to utilize in your, uh, in your product. And that is exactly why certain people in the mass production industry um, do uh, use brass for certain specific applications where it will perform uh, much better and at a lower cost compared to steel, for instance. Another great thing about brass also, I should note, is uh, that it's very easy to finish brass and especially, so not only to machine it, uh, but, to, but to tap frets. Um, here, because of COVID, we unfortunately can't be uh, several people at the same time in a room, but I thought we'd uh, include some of my colleagues here uh, to uh, just, do, uh, just do some tapping on sample parts we've had just to show you how easy we can uh, uh, tap these parts and finish them. So as I said earlier, we're not able to be um, several of us in the same room, but just to show you, um, uh, we got our colleague Louis here to um, uh, just do some simple tapping on, on uh, some brass sample parts that we showed earlier in the video. And uh, you can see just how easy it is to tap the parts. He's not even going with any power tool or anything, uh, just with hand tools. And that shows basically how um, easy it is to, uh, to work with brass. So just to give you a little bit of an example, I thought we'd do something a bit different today. Uh, we like to add a few uh, 
a few new things. So uh, you may have seen the CNC machine in some previous videos. Today we're going to be using it to uh, just do a very simple facing operations of one of those sample parts uh, that uh, volunteered uh, for this purpose. You can see I just did a very quick uh, facing operation on, uh, on on the sample part. Basically, even though I chose, um, uh, yeah, I'll say I didn't choose the most conservative feeds uh, and speeds. I just wanted uh, to uh, make the facing uh, done uh, quickly and as efficiently as possible. So this would be a good representation of what a raw fast machine looks like. I have not deburred this yet, so the, the edges are still sharp. Uh, I even missed a little step here, but you can see that even though with that, like the, the surface finish is already um, uh, pretty good, um, even by using uh, relatively sharp tools, but not the the sharpest tool in the shed, uh, if I may say. I did get uh, quite a decent surface finish. So I hope that shows you um, uh, one of the, uh, quickly, what kind of surface finish you can uh, get out of brass in its as machine state. And of course, if you get turned parts, that's another thing I always mention. Um, if you get turned parts, you will always get by default, of course, a nicer surface finish due to the fact that uh, your geometry will turn in a lathe rather than the tool turning on the part. Now to speak about the corrosion, we just wanted to show you with uh, Tobias, another one of our colleagues, how basically you can remove a little bit of surface corrosion on, on old brass that's been a bit corroded, uh, even though that can be a desired thing on uh, cosmetic objects so that, such as this bell. Uh, you can see that um, if it happens on uh, a semi-cosmetic semi part, sorry, uh, that's been made out of brass with a little of polishing compound, uh, man, especially for brass and copper family, it's pretty easy to remove. Um, the surface patina that you can have if it's not desired. Um, yeah, so basically uh, when you have uh, parts that have not been protected for corrosion, let's say that they have not been passivated or received uh, surface treatment, um, just a little bit of, um, of uh, elbow grease and the proper uh, polishing fluid will get rid uh, of, of this old patina. So copper is the second material that I'd like to speak about today. Um, copper is definitely a very interesting material. And by the way, I should note a little bit of a jump back why we're speaking about both uh, in the same video today is because both brass and copper contain copper, uh, even though copper is, uh, it's uh, oftentimes almost a pure alloy of its chemical element as opposed to brass who contains, which contains other materials. Anyway, copper uh, is as well a very old alloy that has been used for quite a long time, but more recently in the more recent hundreds of years, should I say, uh, people have come to discover it not only for its, um, uh, let's say, cosmetic properties, as it used to be in the past, but more for its mechanical properties. One of the great examples of what copper is used for today um, could be heat dissipation. Uh, as you may have noticed if you ever touched, uh, let's say, a copper pan or something made out of copper that was exposed to heat, Copper dissipates heat really well and it will burn you if it's already hot and you touch it. Here, this little part is actually a heat dissipator. This is not CNC machined, I should say. This has been rolled and, and uh, cold and hot formed. Uh, you can see the, the forming marks here. This is a little um, cooling part from a Nintendo Switch that we took apart in the previous video uh, in another series on the channel. Um, and of course, as you can see, this will be probably um, on this side, if I remember correctly, this will be um, uh, glued, um, I mean, assembled with some, um, uh, with some uh, heat paste directly onto the GPU or the heating element, and then the heat will be carried through the copper, and then the heat will be dissipated by a fan from the copper. So uh, first usage of the copper, heat dissipation. Uh, that makes you able to use it for a variety of applications in consumer electronics or other applications where you need to dissipate heat and take it from point A to point B. Um, so consumer electronics, as we said, that can be anything that requires cooling. Maybe you need to cool, a, you need to be cooling uh, a, um, a fluid or a coolant that's been too heated. Uh, this little dissipator, fancy dissipator thingy has been made out of brass, but of course um, 
if you require extreme heat dissipation, it could be made out of copper as well, uh, due to its higher heat dissipation compared to, uh, to copper. Yeah. So you can see just, you've probably seen uh, similar geometries in, in consumer products already. Um, sometimes even some of them are made out of aluminum if, uh, if your heat dissipation is not as, um, let's say, um, uh, strict as uh, you, would, you could do with copper. Um, another part here that we made is uh, a bike pedal. So why a bike pedal in copper? Well, we just wanted to show complex geometry on copper. It, it has absolutely, I would say a bike pedal has absolutely no business being done with copper, but we just wanted to do it for fun. Um, just to show you as well what kind of surface finish you can get on as machined with copper. I don't know if you can see here how uh, this part is machined, but basically if you're able to see some machining marks, uh, you probably see some round tools, uh, some round tool marks that show you how fine uh, the part can be. Copper is a really nice machinable material. Still, I should note, this would not be used for cosmetic properties because you will still see the tooling marks. And second, most importantly, um, as is similar in brass, as we'll speak about as well, uh, it is very prone to corrosion, actually. And same as with brass, any material that contains copper, actually, the corrosion can either be considered an enemy or uh, an ally. If you're working with cosmetic finishes, sometimes you will want to use uh, you will want to use corrosion as uh, as a means to enhance the cosmetical property, the cosmetic properties of the part, by letting it corrode to the famous vert de gris or the, the famous greenish haze that you have on some copper statues, for instance, or some copper railings that you have on roofs. However, if you're working with electrical connectors uh, or such, um, or parts that need to dissipate heat, you will not want this corrosion. Here. Um, I didn't. I didn't ask uh, the. I didn't ask the production team to passivate the parts, just so that we could see. Even though we oiled these parts a couple months back, you can see already how how the corrosion is is just uh, sitting in and, and you know calling this part home. Basically, um, you see all the green stuff that is starting to appear, even though there's oil all over the place. Well, if if a copper part goes unprotected for you know long uh, long amounts of time, this is bound to happen all over the place. And the part will become a um, a greenish, orangeish um, uh, surface uh, everywhere where it was not left protected. Um, if I want to remove a little bit the corrosion on it, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Basically, if you use the polishing compound on all the part in the copper, you, you can just see just how shiny it gets. This is the as machined, or maybe more smooth machining in that stage. I don't remember exactly which one I requested. This is the copper in its uh, smooth machining state. So yeah, I don't know if you can see just when it's clean, just how well uh, the geometry holds. Copper is an excellent electrical conductor. And if you get um, uh, very high purity uh, alloys of copper with more than 99.99% of purity, you can make high quality cables out of it that will uh, conduce electricity uh, very well. Uh, and why that would be is because the more pure the alloy will be, the less it will dissipate heat, the less the resistance will be, and the less heat dissipation you will need in your system, and the more efficient your electrical system will be. For people who look at um, getting copper parts that will not oxidize, um, there are many options available on the market today, especially if you look at mass producing cop copper parts, sorry, or even actually that applies to brass. And that most common one would be passivation. Uh, there are several uh, methods available for passivation, but basically uh, what that means is that you will take a chemical element that will create um, a chemical protection film onto the part that will prevent it or slow down, um, slow down the oxidation process on the surface, making you able to still use uh, the part for its uh, mechanical or electrical, depending on how thick the coating is or um, uh, thermal applications without corrosion um, deteriorating these properties. So that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed, uh, as always, uh, uh, staying with us for this little video. And I hope that we were able to convey to you uh, in, a, in a simple way uh, just uh, how uh, and when copper or brass can be used for CNC machining, uh, especially here three hubs. And uh, we hope to see you uh, next time again for uh, another couple of videos about the next materials on the list. Of course, let us know in the comments if you would like to see some specific materials covered or some specific surface finishes. Uh, we'll more than happily uh, cover those for you in the next video uh, or even do some machining for you or even assembly. Uh, just really let us know. The goal is really for us to connect with you in this uh, little videos in as uh, direct way as possible. And then uh, we hope to see you in the next video.
Thanks.